by banking on really administration. Who's got the power? We got the power. Who's got the power? We got the power. Who's got the power? We got the power. What do they got? They ain't got squads. Why don't you negotiate? Two, four, six, eight. Why don't you negotiate? Two, four, six, eight. Why don't you negotiate? My name is Noeline McElvenna. I'm a professor of history and the contract administration officer for AAUP at Wright State. Okay, now this is day one of the strike. You've been on the strike for like about four and a half hours. Correct. You look like you had a great turnout this morning with the faculty. How do you feel about everything? You know, we have extremely mixed emotions here because this is a very sad day in many ways that we have been pushed to this. Um, on the other hand, it is a great boost to our spirits to see the solidarity, not just of my fellow faculty, our fellow faculty, but of um, community who's come out, uh, union allies who've come out, alumni, students who've come out, um, the people driving by. Uh, you know, we really feel like we're not alone. We really feel we have the community's uh, support and that they have got our back and the students too. And um, so that makes you feel better, even though this is a tragic day, that, that our board has cared so little for the quality of education that they have imposed a contract that forces us out like this. When you they, they, they pretty much just gave you a unilateral take it or leave it, no negotiation. There's been no real negotiation Correct. With, with the board. Correct. And they pretty much are forcing the strike, in your opinion? Well, when you say take it or leave it, mm -hmm. and, and you've made the take it um, just a horrific thing that attacks the quality of education, then we have to leave it. We have to leave our classrooms. We have to leave it and come on out to the curb at Colonel Glenn Highway um, instead of being in our classrooms because we can't take that. We can't accept hurting our students, hurting the reputation of the university, um, hurting the value of the degrees our alumni already have. The, you know, we have professional ethics and, and concerns here and the, um, they've shown no consideration of that. Now there are like four or five major issues. Yeah. Uh, uh, Health care is one of the, the big ones. I mean, the number one is workload. The workload. Because, okay. because what that translates to is much less time for each individual student, much less time for research. Um, when, when, when teachers have to teach more and more and more students, each student gets less and less because a human only has so much time and energy in any given day um, and so we would have to spread ourselves so thin that everything would give um, and that so that's the number one issue Okay. Um, there are several others. Another one that's very concerning to us is um, the job security for the non-tenured faculty. The fact finder said they shouldn't have that. The fact finder said specifically this has no impact on the financial condition of the university. But they put it into the contract anyway to make those people vulnerable so they wouldn't speak up, so they wouldn't contest anything that's going on. Um, uh, they did that with several issues. You know, there's one called merit pay. It's not about merit pay because we're not getting any, um, but it's about the process by which that would be decided ever in the future. Again, all objective criteria taken away and just at the whim of a dean. Again, making people vulnerable. Again, making people have to do what they're told. Um, and that's really, again, a, a big principle of academic freedom and shared governance for us that professors have to be able to stand up to a dean and say that's not good for education so we don't want to do that should that situation arrive um, and so these things are all throughout the contract that just uh, try to take all power away from faculty and put it back in the hands of the board a board who almost destroyed this university a board who spent all the reserves on ridiculous schemes um, and at the end of it they think the solution is to give them more power sure so they was they had a surplus of close to a hundred million dollars at one time just a few years ago and this is all very very recent the um, why 
um, you know, Mike Bridges is still on the board. He was chair of the board when all that money was gone. Doug Faker, who's now chair, was chair of the finance committee. The, the, the head, the CEO of Right Pat Credit Union was chair of the finance committee when all the money was lost. And now he says he wants total control. Uh, you know, these are not people we can trust holding the reins of this university. And, and, uh, and these one, people are appointed by the governor. They and, uh, are. They've all been appointed by Kasich. Um, you know, so we are asking uh, people to write to the governor, DeWine, and ask him about um, replacing them. Um, but, you know, in the immediate, we hope the students will just even go to the local, go to the department chair, go to their dean, and say, this is not the professor I signed up to take classes from. I don't want some substitute. I signed up for these professors because they have expertise. Sure. So the, the work requirements and workload, uh, the ability to foreload, those are the foremost. Healthcare is a well, issue. Healthcare is also a huge issue. Now, we, we understood we'd pay more for healthcare. We offered to pay more for healthcare, but not the particular plan they wanted because their plan hurts the sick and the poorest of us more because it's not the premiums, it's all spread out through the out of pocket and the deductibles oh, and that yeah, sort of stuff, right? So that hurts the sick. As a union, that's against our principles. We've always said we spread the load, so if there's increases, it should be just in premiums. And so everybody shares. We've talked to them. We haven't had a much chance to talk to them. They, they've just said we're not talking. Um, but we, you know, that's the crazy thing here is that you have faculty out on strike, ready to accept a pay cut, but not the particular cuts sure. they made. We knew we'd have to. We knew we'd get no raises, and we knew we'd have to concede um, more uh, of our health expenses. But we wanted to negotiate a plan that we felt was fair. We wanted to give and take. We wanted to give and take, um, you know, and so on and so forth. And then unlimited furloughs, um, you know, unlimited furloughs equals sure. wage theft. Uh, that, you know, you with no, uh, no negotiations at all. Right, that's like, um, you know, we're supposed to hand them over a blank check. Okay, um, no well, one thinks that's wise. I know there's a lot of people from the community. It looks like they're, they've made no efforts to contact you to say, look, let's try to work this out before the weekend. No, we knew, um, actually, Matt Joseph of the City Commission did his best um, all weekend trying to put together a meeting. We said, absolutely, yes, ready to talk, and President Schrader said no. So they're refusing to talk. They're absolutely refusing to negotiate. Negotiate. They, yeah. they use the word like talk, so she'll come in and talk about the weather and say, I talked to them. There's only, you know, you have we, to we, open up negotiations. It, it has to be open and up negotiations. We were sort of fooled with that. We'd love to chat. And we got our hopes up and we had informal chats and they led not, they were just a delay tactic. Sure. They, well, it seems know. like they've took very deliberate steps to bring us to this point. They certainly Now, have. Dayton has a long history of being a very pro-union town. Uh, we used to have very strong union presence here. We still do to some degree. Um, I know there's union folks out on the, from other unions out on the picket line. And we're very grateful. And uh, so you're in uh, having solidarity and support from the community? As, Absolutely. The you know, I, the, the, what we really want everybody in the Dayton region uh, to understand is that the university is a community asset, right? Because even if you don't go to college, you're going to be taken care of by nurses who were trained by our faculty. The scientists who make sure your water is clean are trained by faculty. And you want highly qualified people doing all those roles, right? Taking care of you when you're sick. And you really well trained people, sure. right? And so that's what a, why a university is a public good, because it provides all those well trained people that go out throughout the community. Um, and so you don't want nurses and scientists and engineers who, you know, design your cars, and even the entrepreneurs, the journalists who have not been teachers. trained by the best, oh, teachers, uh, who have not been trained by highly qualified faculty in the first place. So that's how it spreads out into the community. Um, we understand that because we know our alumni and we know the kinds of jobs they're doing all over this region and around the country. Um, 
and so we hope that the community kind of understand the repercussions, the long-term repercussions, the ramifications of this contract for them. It's yeah. serious, um, and and that, that is why professors are out in the line this morning in sure. the cold. Well, there were faculty, and there was a big line of students that came out at 11 o'clock. So you're getting support, and I'm sure you'll get a lot more as time goes on. Well, so we hope so. Thank you very much, and good luck. And Dayton will certainly stand up and stand with the faculty. Thank you.